So here at the Lasercron Center, the roller mill has become really off-center. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. You can see the washboard in the deep pitting right here. And the way that happens is you just create some sort of a little divot and then that divot then grows into giant washboard and as those washboards migrate across the wheel you get really deformed out of shape flat spots. And I wanted to make a machine that allowed us to basically hone these wheels on the actual mill. But to do that my boss man said the only way he'll let me do it is to actually make a training video. So if I'm not here, somebody else is able to use it. So that's what this is. So this machine will enable us to basically hone these wheels in about a day, leaving everything in place so we're right back to action. So here's how you do it. First thing you gotta do is remove this blue hop. So to do that, you unplug the feeding unit on the back there. Then you basically probably get somebody else to help you. But if nobody else is around, like tonight, you can lean it down to the ground and basically set it out of your way. The next thing to do is remove this cage that the hopper is supported by. But like the hopper, you probably want to get somebody to help you do this. I being dumb. So you want to pick straight up. Then it just basically comes away. Now we have full access to the roller mills and everything else we want to basically adjust or clean or whatever's happened to the machine. But before I touch anything, I want to look back and make sure that breaker's turned off. That's on, that's off, because we don't want this thing accidentally turning on, which I've had other machines do. So be serious flip that breaker down, then you can start spinning these wheels and doing what you gotta do. One of the first things we wanna do is fill all of the different Zerk fittings on the machine to ensure that we have grease that's filled all those voids. But I filled each one of the Zerks for each bearing block on the roller wheels. I filled the Zerks here on the front slide, the Zerks back here on the back slide, my grease into here, you'll see a nice amount of grease. You can see it flowing out. So that's gonna create a barrier to keep any kind of dust from making its way into that slide. Before we can do any grinding, we have to basically set the machine up so that it protects itself from all the dust. So here on the Acme thread that drives the roller mill in, we not only wanna cover it, but we're also gonna wrap it with tape to make sure this stays put. The next thing you want to do is install these donuts on the sides of the wheels to protect the big axle bearings. And to do that, it's kind of like the front main seal on an engine. You basically push it in and slide it around. And then once it's slid around, you actually tuck it back into the bearing block. And this makes a nice tight covered area so you can't get any grinding dust into these bearings. Number two, what you can do is you can slide it part way in front and then slide it part way in the back. And then once it's all the way in, you can smush it into its bearing block. There's number two. And if you want, if you're having an issue, you might want to actually add some grease so this slides easier. And so once you've done that, spin the wheels by hand to make sure these foam blocks stay in place. Just pull out all these Zerk fittings on top because they're going to be in the way and we want to either cover them with duct tape or plug them with paper towel. Now before you do anything with the rollers, you want to open them up and drop in this protective shield. This keeps your fingers, any tools, anything from falling down in here. And it's a big safety precaution. So make sure before you're playing with these rollers, you put this plate in here and it could actually save your life. Next thing, we're gonna pull these front bolts out like that. 
The inside one here, you really don't have any access. So what you can do is you can put it right side up, grab your wrench, and use the end of it to actually get your leverage. And with that, you can spin it loose. And then, go quick. Next, we throw in our little posts, and these are what's gonna hold the jig. So those go back in to those bolt holes. And you'll notice the heads on these can be tightened with 3 eighths of an inch socket. And these you want pretty snug. You do not want them to come loose when this whole thing is vibrating and the grinder's cutting away at these wheels. So don't go nuts, but make sure that these are not going to come loose. Then using this little spring caliper, you want to adjust every nut to be more or less the same height. Now this doesn't have to be really precise, but it has to be close because we want this whole thing to sit evenly so when we bring it down, it comes down completely equal on all sides. So now that all these nuts have been adjusted at the same height and they're sure to clear the crown of these bearing blocks, you're going to put on these two plates. And they're different on each side. One, you'll notice, has the holes offset to this post. The other one has the holes in line with this post. The one that's offset is where the grinder is going to be coming back end into. You'll see in a minute. So you got to make sure that on the front, it's oriented so the sparks fly out. And so to do that, the one that has the holes offset to the post goes on this side. And the one, the holes in line with the post, goes on this side. you got to tuck it underneath this little flap that's on the belt cover. And then once you do that, you can throw the other nuts on and lock it down. And when those are on, you can use a three-quarter inch wrench to really get those snug. I can't reiterate enough that you do not want this thing to come vibrate loose. Because if the grinder starts dropping into these wheels, you have a big problem. So now that we have the base established, let's check out this grinding attachment. So this is the mechanism that I made to actually finish the wheels on the roller mill. And so all it is, is just two linear slide bearings and then a little collar that grabs onto the grinder. And then we have these two tabs on each end that are rounded so that we can adjust our wing nuts every time we spin this to basically keep up with the grinding wheel getting smaller and the roller wheel getting smaller as well. So let me show you how to put this thing together. And so the way this comes in is it comes in from the outside and as you put it in, you wiggle it back and forth until you can really get that basically tight and slammed against this vertical collar. And then once that's in, take an Allen wrench and tighten that. And you want this pretty tight because the grinder is vibrating, the roller mills are vibrating. So you really don't want anything to come loose because if it comes loose, you chance messing up those wheels. Once that's in, take your grinding wheel, preferably a new one. That thing slides in there. Put your retaining collar on. And you want to put the collar on so that the inner, basically there's like an inner flare. That goes in too, that helps center that grinding wheel. And so what you do is you put that outer locking nut on. Spin it down, and then to finally tighten it up, there's a little locking mechanism right down here on the grinder, this little black tab. So hold that thing down, and really all you got to do is spin this by hand, because the way the threads are set up is it's self-tightening. So get that about as snug as you can. Then we have our dust collector and our guard. That you put over the grinding wheel first, and then after you do that, you drop it onto these little posts. Posts are on, put on your little quarter inch nuts, 
and then snug these down with a wrench. Once that's snug down, this thing's ready to get thrown back onto the roller mill. So you want to do it in such a way that they both come down evenly, or you'll kink it and fight it. Just like I'm doing. There you go. So once that thing is down, on both sides you put a little brass washer and a wing nut, making sure the slight camber aims upward. Once you've got this thing mounted and more or less parallel to the axles, you bring out your little spring caliper again. And what you're going to do is you're going to go from this axle to the actual grinding wheel. And you're going to move it around a bunch until you're making sure that you're high center on the axle and high center on the grinding wheel. This goes between them and you want it to just touch that grinding wheel. You also have to make sure that there's a little step on this axle right before the wheel. You need to make sure you're either focusing on top of that step or below it. But make sure you do the exact same for both sides. I'm going to not use that step because that allows me to go straight vertical to that grinding wheel. And so, this one you can lock. Make sure you have the definite measurement by wiggling it back and forth a bunch before you go to the other side. And so now I know this just barely touches that grinding wheel because I've wiggled it enough and now it does it, barely touching it. Push it to the other side. And now this side is the one that you're going to adjust using your wing nuts here. And so, I can see that I'm almost a sixteenth of an inch off, and so I bring the bottom one down, bring down the top one until they're locked again, and then see if I can actually touch the wheel. And so that's too much, so I'm going to back off a bit. Still too much. But you make sure that you do not try to actually test with the calipers until you've locked both wing nuts. Because this plate could be floating and not smash down on that bottom wing nut, which is the most crucial of adjustments. And so right there I've got it. So now that I've got this adjusted, I want to mark the alignment of the wings on each nut for the bottom wing nut. You're, I'm going to do that on both sides and that's the relative position that I always want both of them in. If I spin them both down a half turn, I want them back in line with those marks and I know the whole machine has precisely come down a half a turn on those wing nuts. First thing necessary is mark the lowest spot of each milling wheel. So, mark, we can see through the gap biggest right down there so what we want to do is mark that not only on the wheel but also on the side in case we lose that from grinding. You set the depth and then you spin away from that low spot pretty far away and make an initial cut and then start cutting around that low trough and you want to do that and you want to jump around the wheel because if you start your lowest cut near the lowest part of the wheel, the grinding disc will wear out so quickly that you'll still have a high spot on the opposite side of the wheel because by the time you've gotten there, you've worn out your grinding wheel. So jump around when you make a new initial cut after you've set that low depth. Now that I'm about to grind, I'm gonna wear a dust mask, eye protection, and ear protection. And all of these are crucial because you're dealing with things that are flying all over the place. You're dealing with a lot of dust. So make sure you've got everything on before you turn anything here on. So now that we're ready to go, I can finally plug in the grinder, plug in the vacuum, put on the suction hose. The vacuum fitting can be loose, but make sure to tape the hose up to the handle to keep it up and out of the way. Now let's get to grinding. Notice the speed I pulled across the wheel. This is an average speed on a shallow cut. You'll be much slower for deeper cuts. Now 
We don't have all day, so let's fast forward. Sped up, we can even make dentist sounds. If the wheels haven't been serviced in a while and are really out of round, you will need to first take off most of the excess surface with the wheels not moving. If you stay just above the lowest worn trough on the wheel, you don't risk cutting too deep and removing unnecessary metal off the diameter of these wheels. This is how it looks roughed out and ready for fine truing. But once you've got it kind of roughed out, you can turn the machine on and start cutting from there. Make sure before you turn this machine on that the grinder's well above any of the highest points on this wheel before you start cutting. If this is a routine truing of the wheels that are in pretty good condition, then you can just jump straight to this process. This can be a painstaking process of being very conservative so you make no mistakes. One of those really worn wheels took me six hours of grinding, so make sure to go very slow and careful with the speed and depth of each cut. If you're cutting a nice, smooth, effortless cut, everybody's happy. But when you start cutting too much, that causes a vibration in the cutting system, so you actually cut deeper than your set height. And that's because the grinder's actually moving up and down trying to cut too much. And so you might be thinking you're coming along and skimming, but if you're really making that grinder work hard, you could actually be cutting deeper than you expected. So no more than an eighth of a turn on the bottom wing nuts. And when you do start cutting, you'll notice that it just is nicking one spot on the wheel. So it's starting, it's nicking one spot on the wheel and you're coming really slow. You only push this about, to go from one end to the other, it's gonna take you about five minutes. And when you start cutting a rough wheel with the machine running, it's gonna take a while before you actually get to cutting most of the wheel. For a while, it's just gonna throw sparks in a minute as those high spots are coming around and getting hit by the wheel. This is the beginning of a tedious project. Start with small amounts of lowering of the bottom wing nut until most of the wheel is being ground and then finish with even smaller movements to leave a shiny finish. Just to make this video as painful on you as it was to grind, here's ample footage of the process. Your final cuts on each wheel should spin the lower wing nut no more than a sixteenth of a turn. This ensures a smooth, shiny finish with no more of that chatter from the grinder. So you can see that I've still got some wear from those big divots that we saw at the beginning of this, but 
I'm going to leave those because now that I have this machine built, I can true these wheels every few months and I'll get down to those, but these are some really expensive wheels, thousands of dollars. So I want to be able to bring it down slowly and get to the bottom of those little wear marks. But in time, we're not in a hurry. But that's a nice smooth finish. So what I'm going to do now is switch it to the back. But remember to do that, we have to flip the machine. It was here. So we're going to flip the whole thing because we always want to be grinding away from the wheel in the back, away from the wheel in the front. Because the roller mill spins this way, we want the grinding wheel to hit the roller mill like that so it actually cuts. If we did it the other way, the two wheels would just roll together we wouldn't get any cutting. This is how it looks set up and cutting on the back wheel. But I won't make you suffer through more tedium, so let's speed it up. On each wheel, you can expect 30 to 50 of those slow passes to get down to the sweet spot. As you can see, this process takes a ton of time. And it takes enough time that when you actually get this thing figured out, you'll want to do like a six month period where you come back and you dress the wheel. Because big wear actually causes much worse wear faster because the wheels really start beating themselves up. In a great world, we would turn this down so it was perfectly smooth, but then we're just losing life on these wheels. So I'm gonna call that good. Make sure both wheels are the same diameter. We can do that just by using our same little calipers here. And it doesn't have to be totally exact, but you have to get an idea that it's within, you know, 64th to 128th of an inch. And so you basically adjust your calipers until you get to the top of the wheel. And once you get there, you do it on the back wheel. And I can see that pretty much both of these are close. And you got to realize that these things are just beating the crap out of rocks. And so if this is left running with nothing in it, the wheels will actually cause slippage. But most of the time, this should be hitting rocks and that little difference shouldn't matter. Now that we've finished both wheels, I've noticed that there's a really nasty burr on all edges. Partly because it mushroomed out as it slammed into itself, and also partly because it rolled off as we were grinding. To take a grinder and just basically remove that burr and make it so it's not so sharp and dangerous. Vacuum everything before we move any of the bolts, any of the slides, everything has to be vacuumed out before we can blow or wash the machine. That way we get rid of all of the metal particles and the corundum so we don't blow it deeper into recesses. All the zerk fittings. In the end, wipe the machine slides and other excess grease off that might have any of this grinding dust in it. Install the zerks and you're good to go. Let's compare the wheels to how they were. To how they are now. So right there, you can actually just hear how smooth they roll together once again. All we gotta do now is put back on that frame thing, put on the blue hopper, we're back to business. Pekka, I hope you're happy.